Browser extensions are one of the easiest ways to get started using OSINT tools. And today, we're going to cover an OSINT tool that allows you, with a simple right mouse click, to search for hashes, email addresses, and URLs on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. One of the biggest challenges for people creating OSINT tools is making them cross-platform and easy to use. And fortunately, Mitaka is exactly that. Now, in order to use it, you just need to have Firefox or Chrome, because it's a browser extension that allows you to select certain pieces of text you find interesting and run them through a variety of different search engines, all with a right mouse click. Now, in order to use it, you'll simply need to have a browser installed. And this can be Firefox or Chrome. It doesn't really matter. It works perfectly well on both. If you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. And today, we'll be taking a look at identifying malware with Mintaka and even doing smaller things like identifying whether or not an email address exists on other websites. Once you have a browser installed, then we can begin. Mintaka is a browser extension for investigators who are using a browser like Firefox or Chrome as the primary tool in their investigations. And the way it works is incredibly simple. Now, first, you can go to ninoseki.github.io slash project slash mintaka. You can also check out the Nullbyte article in the description for a link as well. And from here, you can go ahead and click on the browser you're using, either Google Chrome or Firefox. And after clicking on it, you can install it very easily. And I've already installed it uh, on my Firefox, but it doesn't really appear up here. You don't really interact with it that way. Instead, you'll go ahead and find something of interest on a website you're investigating. In this case, let's say this example here. And even though that it is fanged, aka we are obfuscating the fact that this is an email address, we can still just right mouse click on it and see that Mitaka appears. And we can use this to start learning about something like maybe the email address. So as you can see, there's a bunch of different tools you can use to start to investigate a clue you find a little bit further. And if we want to learn something like maybe the email reputation of this particular email address, we can see that test at example.com is probably not one we should trust. And in fact, we can see from this return that it's been blacklisted and flagged for malicious activity. So if we were to receive a email address that had been flagged in this way, we would be able to very quickly determine that it was associated with somebody who was blacklisted for malware or something maybe like phishing. And that would be a good way to identify a risky email address. Now, conversely, if let's say we are looking through a breach of different people's passwords and we want to identify whether or not this is a real person, we can take a properly formed email address, right mouse click on it, go to Mitaka, and then use the same email rep tool to determine that in fact, this is probably a real person because the email address in 26 reputable sources on the internet, uh, including Vimeo, Pinterest, and About Me. And we can see all this information here about the different types of high quality profiles that are linked to this and determine that this is in fact, probably a real account. Now, we can also do some other interesting things with Mintaka that I think are really cool. And one that's particularly interesting is malware analysis. Now, let's say that we're on a website and we have a file we want to download and it looks reputable and the website looks good and we've heard of this tool. And once we download it, we compare the hash to the one listed on the website, which is this one right here. And we're like, all right, this is probably, probably an okay file because we know that the hash matches what's on the website. So we know that this is the file that the author intended for us to download. But how do we know if the file is actually okay? Well, if a virus scanner doesn't catch it on the computer, you can always take the hash of the file that's on the website, right mouse click on it, and then in Mitaka, use something like virus total to identify a potentially suspicious file by looking at the hash and trying to find out whether or not it is something that could harm your computer. In this case, we can see that there are multiple detections. And in, in this case, it is a Mac OS crypto miner. So if we had run this on our computer, even though it's undetected by Avast and a bunch of other different pretty reputable uh, malware scanners, it still would have gotten through if I hadn't first right mouse clicked on the hash of the file and checked it through Mataka before actually running it on my computer. 
So as you can see, this is a pretty effective way of encountering maybe a file on the internet and very quickly checking to see if it's been flagged anywhere like VirusTotal or another data source for doing something bad. Now we can also do URL searches. So if we are in a big data dump or if we want to identify whether or not a particular URL is identified with something sketchy, we can just kind of uh, highlight the URL, right mouse click on Mitaka, and then we can run it through whatever we really want. We can do census or we can look at it from either a technical level, level or a threat detection level. In this case, we can see that this particular domain is also associated with some pretty sketchy stuff. Uh, and because we can see that it is being used for apparently porn lookups and all sorts of other sketchy activities, we can assume that this is probably not a domain that's owned by like a corporation or something that is more straightforward. This is just someone looking to make as much money as they can off of the web space that they have. So we can also see here that is it is a Amazon system, which means that it's probably just a rented system. It's not actually someone's physical setup. And all this kind of points to the fact that this would be a very, very sketchy website to do business with if you were looking to determine whether or not someone's website was legitimate or maybe attached to a bunch of other sketchy operations. Now, this is a pretty basic use case, but as you can see, there are tons of different ways we can find a clue and investigation, and with a simple right mouse click, have access to lots of different contextual searches based on the type of data we're working with. And one thing I really like about this is it is able to identify the different types of data you're highlighting and offer you different ways of searching depending on the different tool or the different type of data that works well with these suggestions. So these are not all just random. It gives you the whole kitchen sink. Instead, it gives you kind of targeted options, allowing you to pick whatever is most appropriate for either a hash or a email address or something like that. So that's a quick overview. And in general, if you want to get started with this, you should just go through the different data types, highlight something like a hash, take a right mouse click onto it and see the type of hash resources that are available because this can be a little bit overwhelming when you first get started. And I'm not even gonna be able to go into today how to use all of these tools because there are so many different searches built in. For investigators looking to follow up on clues they discover during an investigation, Mitaka is an amazing way to simply right mouse click on a subject of interest and find out if a file is malware, an email is mentioned anywhere else on the internet, or a link has been mentioned in a virus total or other sort of report that might indicate it's being used for malicious activity. Now, all these things are incredibly useful when packed into a browser extension, and if you want to learn more about Mitaka, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. Aside from that, that's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Thanks for watching, and if you have ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.